Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio, so today we need to talk about the final good cards, the final important cards, the final really relevant cards from Stellar Miracle over in Japan, which of course is going to come as Stellar Crown over here. Sounds like a plan? Excellent. Because there's one Pokemon EX that we've not yet had a chance to talk about, because it wasn't revealed before today. But now it has been revealed, so let's have a look at Metacham EX. Shout out to the lovely Anton Bilet, of course, who has translated all of these. I did the translations myself, as I tend to do. But then I have, of course, checked with the lovely Anton Bilet to make sure I've not done something really dumb. Sounds like a plan? Excellent. So what have we got from Metacham here? Well, we've got ourselves a new EX that has got 260 HP, retreat cost to 1, weakness to psychic, nothing out of the ordinary yet. But we've got 3 energy, 190, not affected by weakness or resistance. Yeah, I, I'm just not a fan of this, honestly. Not a fan of this at all. You're not hitting the key numbers of like 220 and 230. You're not hitting weakness, which would be really good. You are going through resistance, but you know what would be better? Just doing a bit more damage. Because 190, even when you go through resistance, is not enough most of the time. So, yeah. Sorry, not a fan of this one. But I do like the first attack. The first attack for two colorless energy lets you put damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon until it's got exactly 50 HP remaining. Cool. And one of the really cool things about this is that there's no downside for using double turbo energy. Generally speaking, use double turbo energy, but ah, oh, shucks, it means that you do 20 less damage. But here you're putting damage counters on until they've got 50 HP remaining. So using double turbo gives no disadvantage. It just makes the attack easier to pay. Which frankly, I think is a good thing. The thing is, I'm not sure exactly why 50. Like it's a super awkward combo. I'm going to tell you that right off the bat. But we do have a Crobat around right now that takes extra prizes. But it does 30 damage. It's the one from Silver Tempest. And it lets you take two more prize cards. So if this put them to 30 remaining. And like I say it's super awkward because it's a stage 2 and all of that. But the combo with Crobat would be really very very tempting. And you don't get that. What you do get here is Dusclops. So you put a Pokemon down to 50 HP remaining. Dusclops self KOs. You drop 5 damage counters. Jobs are good un. And even if they've gone to the bench, you still get to drop the five damage counters with Dusclops. But now it's a two turn thing, and I've got to give up a prize to do it. And it just seems way too awkward, honestly, to really pay off. Maybe there's a combo to be made here with like Monkey Dory moving damage counters around, or Radiant Alakazam. And then maybe bring in Crobat, although at that point you really are getting a little bit ridiculous. And we're just in an awkward situation where it feels like there's a combo to be made here. I just don't think right now we have a combo, maybe in the future. And if we get something cool in the future, then I will change my opinion drastically. Right now, this just seems a bit meh for my liking. Sorry about that. I'm giving it three wassies. It's not out and out absolutely unplayable terrible garbage. It's fine, but it's not good. And that's kind of my problem here. But that's all right. It's not just that. We've also got ourselves a new Mean Shao, and I like this. I'm a big Mean Shao fan. I'll be honest with you. Big fan. But is it actually any good? Well, what we've got here is single energy, 30 damage... But if your opponent's got five or fewer cards in hand, it does 60 more. Now, I'm not sure exactly how to think about this one. Because single energy 90 on a stage one is actually pretty good. You're essentially getting evolving Pokemon, basics or stage ones. And you're getting support Pokemon as well. So there are a lot of Pokemon that will fall within this 90 damage. But it's a stage one, so I've got to evolve up in order to use it. 
And my opponent's got to have five or fewer cards in hand. And this number is very, 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 very relevant because of I and O. Now, if my opponent has taken a single prize, I and O will put them down to a five card hand, guaranteeing I get the extra damage here. Problem is, if they haven't taken a prize, I and O doesn't work. And there is an alternative. The alternative is the item card Hand Trimmer from Temporal Forces. Each player discards from their hand until they have five cards in their hand. So this will guarantee your opponent has a five card or lower hand. Because if they're above, just play this. And then you will get this firing. But now you've got like a random item card. And item cards are a bit of a pain to search. And it just feels like you're going to miss it too often. As soon as they've taken a prize, I know is great. But before they've taken a prize, you're kind of reliant on hand trimmer. And that makes me a little bit sad. Love single energy 90 on a stage one Pokemon. But I just think it's a little bit too awkward. Sorry about that. I don't know. Let's give it another free Wossies. But there are two new Pokemon tools we need to have a little bit of a chat about. We've got Payapa Berry and we've got Oka Berry. And they are basically exactly the same with one key difference. You see, Papaya Berry works for Psychic Pokemon, or against Psychic Pokemon, and Okaberry here works against Fire Pokemon. And it reads, if the Pokemon this card is attached to takes damage from an opponent's Fire or Psychic Pokemon's attack, that attack does 60 less damage, and discard this card. It basically reduces damage by 60, but only the once, and then it gets discarded. I feel fairly confident at this stage that over the next few sets, we're going to get the complete set of berries. At the moment, we've got Psychic and Fire. But over the next few sets, I expect to get all the different types. And essentially, the answer here is, are you worried about a particular type of Pokemon? Are you worried about a particular deck? But even then, if the deck is playing multiple different types of Pokemon, that becomes a little bit of an issue because they can use another kind of attacker. So these are kind of good, but they're really, really specialized. Like here, if you're really worried about Gardevoir decks, for instance, or other psychic decks, maybe. But even Gardevoir's got enough tricks to hit the bench that you're probably not even going to worry about it then, honestly. If you're worried about a particular typing... This can give you a little bit of protection. But I kind of see it like I see those gloves cards we had a while ago that did an extra 30. And we, over a few sets, we did get all of them. So we could do 30 to an extra whatever. But then we did end up in a situation where occasionally we would see one of them popping out a little bit. But it was very much a fringe use for specific matchups rather than actually being legitimately good cards. Uh, I don't want to just copy myself, but I kind of think free Wossies again. These are all decent cards that might end up coming around at some point. Now, a card I do like for incredibly cheeky purposes, Comfey. Now, for a single Psychic Energy, 20 damage, flip a coin if heads 20 more. Maybe if you're hitting for weakness, again, something that's weak to Psychic. And your flipper heads. But I just went on PKMN cards and searched for Pokemon with any HP or less of a weakness to Psychic. That there, There's nothing. Like, the absolute best around is the whole Lucha from Scarlet and Violet base. Which is an occasional one-off tech. So, you're unlikely to be doing this. But I do like the first attack. Single energy again. Both players draw three cards. Now, in the early game, this is fine. Because if you're having a really bad start, this will let you draw free cards and drawing free cards is good. Do you want to let your opponent draw free cards? No, obviously not. But if it's one of those games where you're just drawing nothing and you're in a bad way and you're going to lose the game, then you drawing free and your opponent drawing free is better than you've got nothing you lose. Okay? It's not ideal, I'll be honest with you giving your opponent free cards. But if you've really got nothing going on, it's fine. But if your opponent's got three or fewer cards left in deck, this attack reads, you win the game. This is a great cheeky little tech for decking out your opponent. 
and I love this. We've all seen that Chi Yu has seen a little bit of play because it can mill the top two cards of your opponent's deck, make them discard the top two cards of their deck. Well, this doesn't mill, all right? Chi Yu, you can start early, do a bunch of milling, maybe you hit a really important card and then they can't win the game. This doesn't do that. This will make your opponent draw a bunch of cards and make it more likely they get what they need. But towards the end of the game, this can be really fun for decking out your opponent. If they've got seven cards left and they need two KOs to win, you can really shorten the clock here. Make them draw three. They draw one and take a KO. Make them draw three. You win the game. It's not just the last three, it's if you can use this to accelerate the game to the point where they deck out before they can win. It's not going to work that often, but sometimes this could be a really, really cheeky tech for decking out your opponent, and I love it. Seriously, keep an eye on this one. This one could be genuinely great. Speaking of an occasional tech that could end up being very, very good, how about Diancy? Single colorless energy, and it does 40 damage for each special energy card attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon. Yeah. Every so often, we get special energy heavy decks around. This is a single colorless energy on a basic Pokemon. To put it another way, it could not be easier to tech it into a deck. And, or unless it was free, but come on. And it does 40 free special energy out there. Now, annoyingly, Lugia's got resistance to fighting. Although, fun fact, if they get 8 special energy out, even with resistance, you'll KO the V-Star. It's asking a lot, but still. And it doesn't just have to be Lugia. At any point in the future, we could get more Pokemon out that really rely on special energy. More decks that are very special energy hungry decks. And if we ever get those kind of decks... This actually becomes a really legitimately fun tech against them. And that's really, really good. And speaking of special energy hungry decks and how to take them down, Mo Rotom. Single colorless energy, 30 damage. But before you deal damage, you discard all Pokemon tools and special energy cards attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. So, if they're relying on special energy, and they've accelerated a bunch, this is actually a really fun way to come along and be like, gutted, mate, now you don't have all that special energy anymore. Again, we're talking about a very fringe card here, right? We're talking about a card that's going to be used occasionally here or there, but it's a basic Pokemon for a single colorless energy, making it extremely easy to tech into decks, and for that reason... I like it very, very much indeed. Keep an eye out for Morotom. Morotom is very fun indeed. And then we're going to finish off with another Pokemon beginning with M. It is Metal Metal. Firstly, Takumi Wada is back doing art for the Pokemon TCG. That's fun. Secondly, we got an attack for free energy that does 250 on a stage one Pokemon. There's got to be a catch, and there is. The catch is that you have to discard a Pokemon tool from this Pokemon before dealing damage or else it does nothing. Okay. And to be fair, the tool is actually super annoying, the fact that you've got to discard it, because what I would generally tell you here is that one of the absolute best tools that you could play around with would be Defiance Band. Because that does an extra 30 damage if you're behind on prizes. Puts you from 250 up to 280. And gets stuff like the aforementioned Lugia. Gets V-Stars and, and a few other relevant EXs and all of that. It would actually be a really good card. But unfortunately you have to discard it before doing damage. But Pokemon V's the magic number is 220. Basic EXs the magic number is 230. And we got Metang still. And Metang will accelerate energy. Or just use double colorless energy because it doesn't matter if you reduce it by 20. Because really the numbers you're looking to hit here are 220 and 230. So double turbo bringing you from 250 down to 230 is fine. The best thing about 250 is you can use Defiance Band to go up to 280. But you can't use Defiance Band to go up to 280. So honestly here, just use 250 as a, hey, even with double turbo, I'm still hitting 230. That's really fun. 
I like this Pokemon. I think as a stage one Pokemon, for a pretty payable attack cost, doing this much damage, genuinely awesome, and I love it. But I told you about it now, I told you about, oh, let's give this one four wasses, I genuinely love it. All the ones I haven't scored, somewhere between three and four, we're fine. For now, I want to know what you think about all of these new cards, I want to know which ones you think can make a difference, I want to know anything you want to tell me, so let me know in the comment section, would you get us? Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Pokemon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join a Discord, and all kinds of fun things. And get shoutouts on the channel, like the lovely Uncle Poker Peter, who's been a supporter of ours for a while now and is a very lovely person. So shout out to them for the support and the loveliness. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.